Fuller grabs the checkered flag in the jet. The Orwell Express closes the season on a high note. It's time, Super Dirt Week 47 ready to go. Welcome to this week's edition of Race Pro Weekly. I'm your host, Mike Warren. As many of you know, this is our Super Dirt Week 47 Preview Edition. So let's kick it off with last year's Billy Whitaker Cars 200. Super Matt Shepard would lead the field of the green for the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 one year ago as Rick Laubach would make his way to the inside lane and cars not wasting any time working to the outside as the track would rubber up early in this event and kind of do a switch in the last 100 laps. Very interesting the way this worked on pit road throughout the entire event. Cars were trying to make their way up in the early going of the feature event to see who would take home the $50,000 prize at the end of the day. As you see Billy Decker trying to work his way down the back stretch. We fast forward to the last couple laps of the race though. Peter Britton leading the majority of the second half, but Larry White gonna slide in right in front of him. He'll take that position away going down the back straightaway. Britton gonna come right back on the inside. He dived back down to the bottom. Now as that happened, Super Matt starting to work his way back up through the field as he pitted at about the midway point and starting to catch the second place man, Larry White. He pulled to the inside down the back straight away and move into second. Then it was a cat and mouse game throughout the final 10 laps of this event. As Britton would rock the inside, Kenny Tremont would be up on the outside, not allowing the 9S to pull up to try to get around. So the 9S would have to go to the inside as Shepard would try to make the move and it looked like it would have been immortality for the 21A of Peter Britton. Shepard would work his way back down into turn number three and four in the closing stages of this one, trying to keep it hooked onto the bottom as they worked up into the corner and still Britton holding off the 9S with a couple of laps to go. Again, Shepard trying to work that dentist company's car number 9S to the bottom. He tried everything on the inside lane. Finally, on the last lap, he powered to the outside of the speedway after they both cleared Tremont, and it would be the 9S down the back straightaway taking the advantage of this one, rolling down into turn number three and four, as it would be Matt Shepard picking up the Billy Whitaker Cars 200. Britton would finish in second, Larry White third, Stuart Fries in fourth, Jimmy Phelps would come home fifth. This past Saturday night at the Fonda Speedway, it was the Jack in honor of Jack Johnson as part of the Super Dirt Car Series. Let's head there now to see who would pick up the win in our opening highlight brought to you by Lando Maintenance. We'll start you off with some early action as Ronnie Johnson goes for a ride up into turn number one and two, going up and over in that Mickels Automotive car number two RJ. Jesse Mueller going to do the same thing as it was a very fast racetrack on Saturday night. To the feature event, though, Super Matt Shepard going to lead the field of the green to the dentist company's car number 9S machine as the field will work down the back straightaway early. Lightning Larry and Stuart Friesen trying to push their way up through the field as they sneak by Danny Varon as it would be Shepard in the lead with Larry White rapidly closing, working down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, here's the 21 of Danny Johnson and the 21 of Peter Britton fighting for position up into turn number one and two as the caution will come out for Jimmy Davis on the back straightaway. Off the restart, Larry White with a great shot at Matt Shepard would dive down into turn number one and two and take the position away. Stuart Friesen going to look to follow as he put that Harmar International car number 44 into that number two spot down into turn number three and four. Wouldn't be long before Friesen would work the outside lane to be your new race leader. Down the back straightaway as cars would start to make their way up through the field, including the one X of Willie Decker. Keep an eye, though, on that 19 of Tim Fuller as he started picking them off one by one. The 93 machine of Danny Barron would fight back underneath the inside of the 1X of Decker down to the turn number 3 and 4 for position as Fuller would eventually crack the top 5 getting by Danny Varon for position. 
It wouldn't be long, though, as Pat Ward sitting right there as well would see the 19 of Fuller get by him down into turn number three and four as Fuller, who's been on a roll of late, starting to catch the top two. Meanwhile, here's Larry White trying to dive back underneath the 44 machine, a freezing down the back straightaway for the lead when the caution comes out for the Drellos number 111 machine. Off the restart, Larry White still sitting behind Stuart Friesen as Fuller would now get by Shepard and get by White for second with Brett Hearn charging right behind him. It wouldn't be long as they come off the corner. There's the 20, going to get by the 9S down in the inside lane. Now the battle for the lead is Tim Fuller works to the bottom of the racing surface to try to get by the 44 of Stuart Friesen, and he does. Hearn working on the back of Friesen in the closing stage of this feature event as well as something would go amiss, a right rear tire that is, on the 9S of Matt Shepard. Fast forward to the restart. It would be the 19 machine of Fuller back out in front. Freezing, trying to get to him, but it wouldn't be enough as the Empire Executioner picks up the win. Fuller grabs the victory and will start no worse than 12th at Oswego next week. Stuart Freezing would finish in second. Brett Hearn third. Eric Rudolph fourth. And Rocky Warner would come home with a big top five finish. It's now time for this week's John Ray and Sons fan poll question, which is... What are your feelings on Brett Deo taking over the promotional roles at the Fonda Speedway? Head to Facebook.com slash RaceProWeekly to cast your answer. Let's take a look at last week's question, which was, what were your thoughts on the Vermont 200 at Devil's Bowl? Well, all of you thought it was a fun time, and we're very happy with how it went. When we come back here on Race Pro Weekly, we'll head to the Green Mountain State for the finale at the Devil's Bowl Speedway. And we'll take a look at what happened to the Small Block Super Dirt Series event on Friday night at Fonda. Hi, I'm Eric Pope, General Manager of John Ray & Sons. We're proud to be offering Bryant heating and air conditioning systems. Just like us, Bryant has been delivering home comfort solutions for more than a century. Call today for a free consultation and save up to $875 with Bryant bonus rebates. I'm Michael Laporte, Service Manager. From sales to service, our goal is to keep you comfortable, whatever it takes. Ductless AC is a perfect solution for homes without ductwork, new additions, or anywhere you need cool relief. Call or visit JohnRay.com today. You know, Mother Nature makes the best products, and Ghent Wood Products in Columbia County has figured out the secret. We use locally harvested trees, milled and kiln-dried right on site in Ghent. We stock rough-cut lumber, green, or kiln-dried. If you prefer finished products, we offer that too, including shiplap, flooring, paneling, exterior siding, and tabletops. Come check out the reclaimed mushroom wood and barnwood siding. We combine the mill experience with a retail store, so you can go straight to the mill and handpick the wood you want. There's only one place in the Capital Region for you to get the full racing action. Stop down at the Bobco Video Booth at the track or call 518-399-0937. Bobco Racing Video, the next best thing to being there. Welcome back to Race Pro Weekly Sportsman Finale up at the Devil's Bowl Speedway in the early going in this feature event. Ronnie Proctor going to take the lead, but cars would be on the move in the early going. Here's DQ2 dropping to the inside lane, trying to pick up a spot on James Fadden down into turn number three and four for position as they worked their way up off by turn number two, but the Orwell Express was on the move as he would be trying to set his sights on the 27 as the caution would come out as Mike Palmer, Joey Scarborough, and the 115 of Kenny Tremont involved up in turn number two. Off the restart, Proctor would take control at the beginning of the field again as they go up into turn number one and two, but it wouldn't be long before Tim LaDuke would set his sights on the bottom side, and he decided to go to the top side into turn number three and four. That allows Hammond to come back on the bottom, but then the Orwell Express powers up off the corner, and Tim LaDuke would go to the front of the field, getting by Proctor for the lead. John St. Germain Jr. trying to work his way down on the inside lane, trying to pick up a couple of positions as Kenny Tremont works his way back up through the field. He'd get by flying Jimmy Ryan and then look to go to work on the 25 of Billy Lucier down the back straightaway. Jake Scarborough also doing the same thing. He cracked the top five up off of turn number two as Tremont now on the back bumper of EQ2. Coming off at turn number four, he get by Justin Combs for position, rolling down the front straightaway and continue to work his way up, then makes it three wide as he get by... Combs again on the bottom side and Proctor as well. But meanwhile, the battle St. Germain trying to move into that number two spot up into turn number two this time with Jake Scarborough looking to follow. And Scarborough with a great run up on the bottom side as Tremont starts to lurk behind him here in the closing stages of this feature event. Scarborough would make the pass for third coming off by turn number four and just set his sights on the 24 of St. Germain down the back straightaway. He grabbed that spot away as Jake Scarborough looking to close the gap 
onto that number 54 machine before the feature was done and over with. Tremont, though, not done in this one. He'd get by St. Germain for third, going down the back straightaway. Looked to set his sights on LeDuc, but couldn't do it as the Orwell Express puts an exclamation point at the end of the season at the bowl. Scarborough would have to settle for second. Kenny Tremont would be your 2018 champion. He'd finish in third. John St. Germain Jr. fourth, and VQ2 would round out the top five. Other winners on the night, limited sportsmen will go to Paolo Pascarella, Andrew Fitzgerald in the Super Stocks, P.J. Blue in the Mini Stocks, Mini Sprints to Dakota Green, and the Mountain Man Enduro would go to Richie Turner. Some pro stock action from last year's Super Dirt Week is Lazaro's Auto Body. Car number seven of Rob Yepin would lead the field of the green. Nosing out ahead of Richie Crane going up into turn number one and two is a lot of Capital Region guys looking to take home the prize as Yepin was looking for his fifth in a row out at Super Dirt Week. Field would work its way down the back straightaway as a number of cars jockeying for position. There's Jason Meltz up on the outside lane. The Bulldog, Dave Bissonette, in there as well as they come off the corner looking for position down the front stretch. As Melt's working it up on the top side, he's trying to get around the Coonrad entry up off of turn number two. Looking for position, Nick Stone in the RCT roof in car number 27 machine, fighting his way down ahead of Kim Duell and the eight of Jay Corbin. But here's the seven of Rob Yetman. He would take the white flag coming down the front straightaway with cars trying to run him down in the closing stages. But the Yetman machine, well, he knows how to get it done at Super Dirt Week. Looking for his fifth in a row. And like Shane Andrews said one year ago, a fistful of dollars coming out for the number seven as Rob Yetman would pick up the win in the Pro Stock Championship event. Kim Dole would finish in second, Jocelyn Waugh coming home third, Nick Stone fourth, and Pete Stefanski fifth. Small block modified feature event out at the Fonda Speedway on Friday night as Bobby Varon and the 44 of Stuart Friesen would work their way up into turn number one and two. Varon, the 2018 King of Dirt small block champion out in the front in the early going of this feature event with Friesen trying to dive bomb down to the bottom. Keep an eye on Jeremy Wilder as he battles with the 111 machine of Dimitri Estrellos up off at turn number two. As Varon would continue to lead, it would be Friesen sitting in second and out riding in third, the Genoa giant Pat Ward. Meanwhile, it wouldn't take long before Friesen would try to make a bid underneath the 76 machine up off a of turn number four as he's going to try to make the move down the short shooting up on the Cow Palace. Down off a of turn number four, it would be the 44 of Friesen going to the front as Jeremy Wilder would bring out the caution with a right rear flat tire on the 22. Off the restart, cars trying to jockey for position. RD3 in there, Eric Rudolph in there as well. Down the back straight away as they fight to move up through, toward the front of the field. Demetrius Trellis working his way up as well along with that 121 machine. That's Super Matt Shepard. He'd fight his way to the inside trying to get by Pat Ward for position down the back straight away. As the Waterloo driver continues to work his way up through the field as now he'd sneak by the 76 machine of Bobby Varon. They worked their way down into turn number three and four. Varon still holding on to that number two spot off the corner as they roll down the front straightaway. As meanwhile, Eric Rudolph trying to work his way up through the field as well, but trouble on the 121 of Matt Shepard. Jeremy Wilder working his way back up through the field as he would look to get by the two RJ down to the turn number three and four as they come off the corner. It would be Wilder holding on to that spot. Dimitri Estrella still trying to work his way up as Friesen was mired into lap traffic down the back straightaway, but you weren't stopping them as they come off a of turn number four. Mr. Freeze picks up the win. Second would be Bobby Marin. Pat Ward would come home third. Eric Rudolph fourth and Jeremy Wilder fifth. When we come back, we'll head to the North Country for the American-Canadian Sprint Car Clash up at Airborne. And we'll check out some more 360 Sprint Car action with the final race of the season for the Empire Super Sprints at Fonda. Performance. Quality. Service. That's DMC Racing Products. Hundreds of name brand parts. Competitive prices. That's DMC. DMC Racing Products. Race to win. Spring is finally here and the temperatures are rising and the deals are hotter than ever. Hi, I'm Charlie Morris of Morris Ford and Burnt Hills. You have to come in for the hottest cars, trucks, and SUVs on the market today here at Morris Ford, all with leading technology and advanced safety. With thousands off and low payments, there's never been a better time to buy a new Ford. So come in to Morris Ford and let us show you why we've been selling cars in the Capital District for over 46 years. Our never will always be number one. Reputable. Reliable. 
results. That's what you get when you call Rick and the professionals at RCT Roofing. Quality service at fair prices. RCT gets the job done. Just like Nick Stone and the RCT Pro Stock. RCT Roofing, we've got you covered. Welcome back to Race Pro Weekly as the American Canadian Sprint Car Clash up at the Airborne Park Speedway for 360 Sprint Cars, the Empire Super Sprints and Sprint Cars in New England on hand as Billy Bannon would you and lead the field to the green as he rolled his way up into turn number one and two with the Cobra. Chuck Eving would be on the move and under fire. From the 28 of Steve Poyer here in the early going of this feature event as Van Imogen would take the early race lead. Poyer would work his way down the back straightaway looking to make a move on the Cobra down into turn number three and four as he connect on the slide jump bringing it off the corner. Meanwhile, Van Imogen in heavy lap traffic was trying to stay ahead of the 28 machine very early in this feature event. Rolling on the outside lane as Poyer was using that top side to get even closer here in the early stages once again. It wouldn't be long before Poyer would rock the bottom of the racetrack and close right in on the back of that number 56 machine at about the lap 10 mark of this feature event. As now Poyer next time by going to slide it even further underneath him, get the power he would need to get to the bottom and take the race lead away here with about 12 laps to go. Poyer still rocking up on the top side. Brings it down off the corner, but the Cobra Chuck Ebing was on the move. He'd get by Van Imogen for spot number two, working it down the back straightaway and look to set his sights on the race leader as a full straightaway advantage would be between the 28 and the 45. And look at the moves Poyer was putting on him, but the Cobra trying to close the gap even more as he would get past Van Imogen, who's still in heavy lap traffic, as Jeff Cook going to look to sneak by on the bottom side, down the back straightaway for the number three position. Back to the battle for the lead. Here's the Cobra working his way underneath the 28 machine. He get by him with just a mere three laps to go as Chuck Ebing looked to be well on his way to the $4,000 prize, but he jumps the cushion in turn number two, allowing Poyer to get by him down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, Jeff Cook trying to chase down the number 28 machine up off of turn number two in the closing laps of this feature event. As they work off the corner, it would be Poyer picking up the victory up at Airborne. Hebing would finish in second, Matt Tanner would come home third, Jeff Cook finishing in fourth, and Billy Van Imogen would round out the top five. Other winners on the night, Adam Pearson grabbing a win the Sportsman, Super Spock Special going to Brent Jarvis, Strictly Stocks to Sean Walker, Mini Mosh to Josh Laporte, Jarvis Walker and Laporte all picking up championships on the season. Pro Stock action from the Fonda Speedway, a 50-lap dirt car Pro Stock feature event. On the tour is many of the drivers from the north making the trip down as Shane Henderson would take the early lead. Here's Pascal Payor going to work his way to the inside of Kenny Gates looking to fight for position down in a turn number three and four. Chucky Dombluski in there as well in the early going as Payor would work to get by Ivan Johnson up off a of turn number two as he would make it stick down the back straight away for position. Meanwhile, as Henderson continues to lead this one, the field works its way up as the Hondo Classic winner, Kenny Gates, working to the inside of Dan Older for a position as Henderson would now be challenged by the seven of Chucky Dombluski as Dombluski brings it down into turn number three and four looking for the race lead and he would take it away. Meanwhile, Payor right on the back bumper and Nick Stone going down the back straight away fighting for a position as they go down into turn number three and four, but here's Gates going to slide underneath them along with Ivan Johnson up off a of turn number four as they would work their way up through another position. Meanwhile, Gates would not stop there as he would get by Cousin Luke down the back straight away fighting for the spot down into turn number three and four as the 35 machine on the move would sneak by Pascal Payor now up into turn number one and two. Meanwhile, Nick Stone trying to get by a CD Bochamp in there as well, trying to get by the Brandon Amy entry up off of turn number four as they fight down the back straightaway. Dombluski mired in heavy lap traffic, though, as you see Bochamp right in front of him up into turn number one and two that time as Dombluski still trying to fight through. He'd get by the 112 of Chris Wemple, but meanwhile, Josh Kunrak goes around. Chucky Dombluski nowhere to go and would take the seven completely out of the feature event. Frank Twing would also be involved in a tough break for the driver of the seven whose bad luck seems to follow here in the late stages of 2018. Off the restart, Kenny Gates would look to get by Shane Henderson up off at turn number two as they go side by side for position down into turn number three and four. Pascal Payor right behind him looking to make it stick off the corner. Meanwhile, Cousin Luke going to slow down the back straightaway. He'd lose a position to a number of guys as Bochamp going to get by down into turn number one and two. Dan Older trying to fight his way up as this battle continues as Horning would lose a couple other positions, but it's all behind Kenny Gates, who picks up the win out at Fonda. Second would be Pascal Payor. Ivan Johnson would come home third. Dan Older fourth, and Mark Sullivan would round out the top five. 
Rewinding back to the great outdoors RV 150, Tim Fuller and Super Matt Shepard would lead the field of the green to cap the Saturday action up at the Clay Palace, as it would be the 3RS looking to go back-to-back -back in competition out at the Oswego Speedway. Billy Dunn working his way to the inside of Peter Britton down in a turn number three and four as those small blocks work their way down through the corner. Meanwhile, cars working their way up as here's Stuart Friesen trying to work to the inside of Eric Rudolph for position as they go down the front straightaway. Matt Williamson starting to work his way up toward the front of the field as well as these cars trying to push to pick up the prize at the end of this 150 lapper. You'd see the cars continuing to work their way through as Brett Hearn will get passed by Airborne Park Speedway champion Chris Rabby back a year ago as Rabby trying to make a move down into turn number three and four but just couldn't get him. Meanwhile, Matt Shepard would see an opening as he would look to get by the 3RS of Fuller down into turn number three and four as he would get him in lap traffic up off the bottom of the racing surface and Shepard just pushes down to the inside lane and he'd take the number one spot away. Fuller would get pushed up to the outside lane and that would allow Billy Dunn to slide by on the inside as well and open up the door for the number six of Matt Williamson who would move into a podium position. The field would continue to battle as there's Williamson getting by that number three machine in the closing stages. As now Williamson in second, coming around with one lap to go, trying everything to get by Matt Shepard up onto the outside lane. Williamson, a regular out of the Merrittville Speedway, trying to close the gap on him, coming down the front stretch. They go up into turn number one and two, and he would drive right to the back bumper, trying to get him to move a little bit, and that would force him to the outside and allow Shepard to drive away as Super Matt would cap the sweep, picking up the win in the Great Outdoors RV 150 in the Small Block Modified Championship event. As they come off a of turn number four, he would grab the checkered fly from Dave Farney. Matt Williamson would finish in second. Billy Dunn would come home third. The Jersey Jet, Brett Hearn fourth, and Tim Fuller would round out the top five. The final point of end of the season for the Empire Super Sprints in missing man formation in honor of Greg Hodden, who lost his life in a crash at Baps Motor Speedway last week. At the front of the field, it will be Corey Sparks and Danny Barron leading the field of the green up into turn number one and two as Barron would work his way down the back straightaway. Coleman Gulick in there as well. Jason Barney, who would deal with an ill-handling race car through the event as Steve Poyer was trying to chase him down to take the point title away, and Poyer would be well on his way but would have a lot of spots to go. Larry White would be working his way onto the bottom side, looking to get by Corey Sparks for position as they work down past the Cow Palace into turn number three and four. White still holding on to that spot as Bobby Varon would sneak by the 1HD up off of turn number two. Almost got him that time. Then he would get him down into turn number three and four as it would be both Varons up toward the front of the field in the very early going of this feature event. Meanwhile, Carr would spin up in turn number three and four, and that would bring out the caution, setting up a restart. Danny Barron would take control again. Here's Lightning Larry White to the inside, going to take the position away from Sparks. Poyer trying to race with Josh Benizic and Coleman Gulick. Spins it around, keeps his foot in it, and saves it. What an unbelievable save as he would hold on and still try to work his way up to get enough points to be your 2018 champion. Poyer would work his way down the back straightaway, trying to hold on as the caution would come out for the double zero of Bobby Varon. Here toward the late stages of this feature event. Off the restart, it would be Danny Varon going back out in front with Larry right there along with Coleman Gulick behind him in the number 14 machine. Three wide battle, we've seen this before. Down the back straightaway, Poyer going to try to keep his foot in it up on the outside lane. He'd make it stick off the corner and would try to roll his way into the top three in the closing stages. As you can see him creeping up on the 14 of Coleman Gulick. Danny Varon way out in front of this one, though, would pick up the victory in the Empire Super Sprint Finale. Poyer would finish second, which would be enough to win the championship once again. Larry White would come home third, Coleman Gulick fourth, and Josh Benizic rounding out the top five. When we come back one last time here on Race Pro Weekly, we'll take a look at some sights and sounds of Super Dirt Week 46, and we'll see who picked up the win in street stock competition at Fonda. Keep it locked right here on RPW.
If you are a tracker series that would like to be highlighted on Race Pro Weekly, email us at show at raceproweekly.com. Action up at the Fonda Speedway. We take you to Friday night, and well, we're going to show you a ride for Harold Chatter. And first, he gets sent up into the outside wall, comes back down to the inside wall as Joey Chris throws the caution. He continues to work on the left side and eventually comes around and comes to a stop. And we got some more action as this was a tough ride for Dave Cook. He gets sent into the outside wall, goes up and over as Cook would be okay, but a tough break. Meanwhile, Randy Miller, no shocker, out in front, picks up the victory in the Friday night portion of the event. The Will Man, the Albany Saratoga Speedway champion, enjoying that, not enjoying the Vikings loss on Sunday, that's for sure. Meanwhile, to Saturday night's action, Dave Morning Sr. working on the back bumper of Zach Sorrentino as Lebanon Valley going to try to take home a win from Fonda. Up off by turn number four as Sorrentino would easily pull away down the back straightaway, and he would pick up the win on the Saturday portion of the event out at the Fonda Speedway. Jason Morrison would finish in second. Horning Senior would come on third. Michael Arnold fourth. And Justin Taylor would round out the top five. Looking at Friday's action, it would be Randy Miller with the win. Zach Sorrentino with a great weekend coming on second. Then it's Al Relier, Steve Kozleman, and Jake Currier rounding out the top five. To Friday's Sportsman main, Dave Constantino would grab the win. David Schilling would finish in second. Brian Pesolano third. Mark Mortensen fourth. And Tim Hartman Jr. would finish in fifth. On Saturday's action, the lunchbox, Chad Edwards would grab the win. Constantino coming home second. Cody Clark third, Tyler Thompson fourth, and David Schilling would round out the top five. Nothing like a rewind of 602 power as we go to the Chevy Performance 75 from one year ago where Dave Marcacilli was looking to go back-to-back. -back. Matt Farnham would be on the outside of him going up into turn number one and two. Todd Root down on the inside lane as well. Here in the early going of this 75 lapper, you see Connor Cleveland and Alex Lajoie fighting for position down the back straightaway. As Tyler Trump in there in the nine machine as well as they would work their way down into turn number three and four. As the sportsman car, you see McAuliffe get a little up out of shape. He'd lose a number of positions coming off the corner as well as they would stay green for the majority of this event. Take a look at RD3 now working his way up on the outside trying to get by Adam McCullough for position as he'd work up off a of turn number two. We move to the closing stages though as the white flag would come out and just like in the first year at the Clay Palace it was the paint trucking M1 of Dave Marcacilli out at the front of the field and he would continue to drive away from Matt Farnham down the back straightaway as he bring him down into turn number three and four. And he would be the winner for the second straight year of the Chevy Performance 75. Out at Oswego for the Sportsman. What a drive in the last 100 laps to come home in victory lane. Yeah, uh, had a little bit of everything today. Uh... You know, like I said, I thought early in the race we did the strategy right. We put some tires on, came out first, got back to the lead, and uh, 
you know, the track did a 180. All of a sudden, it became, um, you know, a fresh tire race instead of a track position race. And uh, at that point, we were kind of fading back through the field there and uh, decided our only option to try and win this thing today was to, you know, wait till 150 or 160 laps in this race and try and put fresh rubber on and try and charge to the front. And thank God it was 200 laps and not 199. Now, describe those last five laps and especially that last lap passing Peter. Ah, uh, you know traffic kind of had everybody bogged down a little bit and uh i could get around the bottom pretty good and um you know peter spotter must have been telling him that and he he decided he was going to really protect the bottom and um i i knew i probably couldn't drive him around around him in three and four and um but my only shot would have been one and two and uh luckily i just got a really clean run in there and the car stuck and got a, enough momentum to drive around the outside of him and just cleared him down the back stretch and uh what an unbelievable feeling, you know, getting into three, just kind of telling myself, man, don't mess this up. Let's get this thing back to the checkered flag here. Five times, five in a row, congratulations. Who would have thought? I mean, you know, breaking this race down, you know, it, it's track conditions were different than last year. You know, our, the conditions, we came, we came in on a pit stop at 38 for, you know, a fuel splash only. So uh, everything was different from last year. You know, we really had to work on the setup. I did not have at all what was I had in the car last year and uh, everything worked really good. Uh, take us back to that fuel stop. Do you think that played good into your hands, or if you went straight through, it might be a different story? Well, I was yelling to the guys during the fuel stop to see how much a lead I did have once we got rolling and got some heat in the tires, and they said I had started to really spread it out, so I just I just tried to hug that rail, hit my marks every lap. Um, you know, I wasn't worried about being light because we had that break, so everything was just perfect. Two in a row, this one, it wasn't as easy as it might have looked out front. No, no, the, the track uh, got really slick uh, the longer we went, and you just had to be patient and, you know, be, be good with running that bottom, and, you know, I made, I made a lot of mistakes, I, you know, maybe it don't look like it, but, I, you know, I missed the bottom quite a few times, and, and, and some, there was some luck on my side, you know, uh, uh, Farham got by me on that, that restart, and, and who knows if I would ever got back by him, you know, we, we were good, we just needed a, a couple laps to get going, and, and we didn't have enough gear in it for the restart, so those were the most uh, nerve-wracking time. Matt, a great run, held off Matt Williamson right at the end. Yeah, uh, you know, just tried to keep my car glued to the guardrail on the bottom, and, uh, you know, thankfully we were able to stay down there and hold on till the end. Now talk about that pass for the win right after he got you. Ah, uh, you know, I thought I gave the race away and slid up in three, and he was able to get by me, and luckily, you know, my car was good enough. I started getting a big run off of two and was able to get up under him, and, uh, you know, beat him back to three and get the lead back and definitely make sure I didn't get off the bottom again. Now we want to hear from you. Who are you picking to win at Super Dirt Week? Between the big block modifying, 358 modifying, sportsman, and pro stocks. Cast your answers and of course, we'll read them out on our next show. It's now time for this week's NISCO Performer of the Week and with his win in the jacket goes to the Empire Executioner, Tim Fuller. Fuller not only will start no worse than 12 of the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 in Oswego, but he's also eligible for Performer of the Year, given out at the end of the season. I'm in a sweet spot. I'm feeling good, the sun is shining, I knew it would, the world's a playground, I'm in the clouds, let me show you what it's all about, check it out. It's what I do. The party's starting. It's going down. Let me show you what it's all about. Check it out. 